Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our 20 minute health by decade presentation presented by Shift and Dr. Brian Hallett. Dr. Hallett is our chief medical officer and a practicing physician at Shift. He is board certified in family medicine and previously served as chief resident during his family medicine residency at President's Resurrection Medical Center. He received his MD from Wayne State University School of Medicine and his MBA from Indiana University Kelly School of Business. Through his work at Shift, Dr. Hallett continually seeks to empower individuals to take and maintain control of their health by working in close collaboration, embracing the complexity of achieving health in the modern world, and focusing first on what is simple. He believes that through small, sustainable improvements in personal habits, we can make meaningful and measurable changes that improve our quality of life and extend our lifespans. So welcome, Dr. Hallett. Take it away. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be able to chat with you all. Uh, today, the topic that we're going to be discussing is one of enduring excellence, talking about lengthening our health span and optimizing our life. Uh, so as we kick off, we'll first set the stage in discussing the topic of excellence and how we connect excellence as a general topic to health excellence. Uh, we will clarify some of the objectives of the differences between health span and lifespan, and then we'll really get to work, starting with the easy part, talking about an overview of the things we should be doing to optimize our health by decade of life, and then really diving into the hard part, knowing that none of us, myself included, is doing everything perfectly as it pertains to our health. So as we kick off, first defining excellence, um, using a quote often misattributed to Aristotle, um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And as we are pursuing excellence, um, even pulling from the ancient philosopher Epictetus. If you want to do something, make a habit of it. All of these uh, quotes really pointing towards the fact that excellence is not a single occurrence, it is a pattern. Um, as we then pull from the ancient Greek word erete, um, describing this concept of fulfilling your own purpose or living up to your own potential, it goes to just point out this fact that the topic of excellence is as old as mankind. And then when it comes to thinking about achieving excellence, uh, pulling from a modern author, James Clear, many things are necessary, but not sufficient for success. As we transition all of these discussions of excellence towards building health excellence, we must realize that optimizing our health is not an act, but a habit. Health must be a forethought and not an afterthought. So as we think of building excellence in our health, first and foremost, we must call out that there are multiple dimensions um, of wellness emotional, spiritual, intellectual, physical, environmental, financial, occupational, and social. At SHIFT, we focus mainly on the physical, but we also do touch on those other domains of wellness as well. In the traditional healthcare environment, we're typically focused on acute care and chronic care, paying some attention to physical therapy and rehab. But at SHIFT, we think even more broadly beyond the ability, certain necessary components, uh, they're not fully sufficient. We also need to talk with each individual about what it truly is to be healthy for them and how to optimize their own health. Uh, each of us will have a different level of optimization and a different desired level of optimization. We work with each individual to help to make those desires a reality. As we are building excellence in our health, before we progress further, we first must pause and talk about sometimes the disconnects between our levels of awareness and our perceived levels of action. Um, as we begin thinking about awareness, you know, think of yourself as a young teenager. Uh, this is that top uh, upper left-hand corner of the screen. I know everything. Uh, when I was 15, I thought I had it figured out. My parents and all the other adults didn't really know what they were doing, but I knew it all. It's at this phase that I had the highest level of confidence in so many things in life, uh, while also my level of knowledge was relatively low. As we progress through just in the general human experience from those young teenage years through early adulthood, uh, we start to realize there is more to it than we thought. Um, and it's only once we reach certain levels of maturity that we're then able to have that high knowledge to realize it is a bit complicated. Similarly, as we begin on the action phase, trying to assess the quality of the actions that we're taking, when we begin, many of us are unconsciously incompetent. We feel as though we're doing a great job because we lack the awareness of how we're doing. Um, 
Unfortunately, this is where some of us are at in our health. We feel as though all is great simply because the system hasn't broken down. But in reality, there may be a lot of things not going well that we need to pay a little bit more close attention to. As we progress along, uh, we meet, move from being unconscious to these uh, areas of dysfunction to being more aware of them, gradually growing in our levels of competence until the eventual goal is one of unconscious competence, this level of expert performance where high level tasks are completed with relative ease due to the patterns and repetitions that have been established, saying, I know how to do this and I do it repeatedly. As we now move along to clarify the differences between health span and lifespan, certainly lifespan is one we are all accustomed to, uh, the number of years in a life. Uh, and to flip that quote in the opposite direction, health span is the amount of life in those years. So thinking about our goals, um, we want to continue to lift, to enhance the quality of life that each individual is living and prolong the number of years that each individual is spending in those years of good health. Um, and additionally, hoping to continue to expand that life expectancy. As we now dive in, starting with the easy part, focusing on what health looks like by decade, we first want to start with this analogy of building a skyscraper. Certainly, when a skyscraper is finished, the first thing that draws my eyes is typically the top of that skyscraper or the beautiful lobby uh, right when you enter. Uh, but to pull a quote um, you know, it's not the beauty of a building you should admire, it's the construction of the foundation that will stand the test of time. And that's really what I want to focus on today, is that as flashy as uh, certain attributes of that building may be, without a strong foundation, all of the rest of the engineering um, and construction is all for naught. So as we start out in our 20s, we really are thinking about that first foundational adult decade. And it's in this phase that we are completing our, our education, entering career, um, we're starting to see issues on the health liability side of things around uh, poor mental health. Um, we feel as though we may still be invincible, <laughs> similar to how we were in our teenage years. And it's this time we may accidentally take too much health risk that we don't fully realize. Uh, it's right now that we start to see some of these poor foundations in our health habits uh, start to be put in place. Uh, and can slowly take us farther and farther off path if we continue with them. It's in this phase that we're seeking to figure out how we connect in with the world. In uh, psychologist, psych, psychologist Eric Erickson's psychological theories of development, of thinking about this one of intimacy versus isolation. Am I going to connect with those around me or am I going to remain isolated? It's in this modern era that we see apps like Tinder and other uh, online dating uh, options soaring in this search for intimacy. If we want to excel in our 20s, we really want to build strong, static, and dynamic foundations in both our physical and our psychological health. We need to tackle the tough issues from our past and continue to grow in our sense of self, our confidence in self, and our ability for self-analysis. As we progress from our 20s into our 30s, we continue to advance in our career, we grow our family, life starts to get full. Along the way, we start to notice some small dips in our ability to recover and the level of mobility we have. We start to feel a little bit tighter. Um, we can still have some binge alcohol consumption that occurs uh, when we're hanging out with friends. And life gets a little bit more stressful. It's in this phase, also pulling from Eric Erickson's work, uh, that we are in this phase of generativity versus stagnation. Am I being productive versus am I being stagnant? Uh, the result here is we can often see very frequent job hopping. Um, in this decade of life, we want to pay heightened attention, attention to our mobility and flexibility. As we'll see in further decades, uh, mobility and flexibility do not improve on their own. Um, in this phase, we also want to maintain balance in all of our life, not just in stating what those priorities are, but also in observing what I'm expressing them as to ensure I'm living out the life that I truly stated I wish to. And lastly, in these 30s, uh, we want to be sure that we are continually working towards building up our health because this is the last uh, decade of life really shifting around 35 uh, where building our health is relatively easy compared to the decades that will follow. As we enter our 40s, we are aiming for our peak in career. We're seeing family grow. Um, we are beginning to think about life after work and we really get into a routine. 
It's at this phase where many of us will begin to notice some dips in the quality of sleep that we're experiencing. We'll feel like we are doing the same thing as before, but the output, the quality of our sleep is dropping off. Um, this mobility piece continues to dip down such that you know the individual who might show up uh, once a week to play some recreational tennis or basketball, uh, they are now starting to think about whether or not they should be going to those activities because of the injuries uh, that continue to show up for them. Um, it's in this phase also that the binge alcohol consumption often dips down, but some daily alcohol consumption dials up. That uh, two to four drinks every day replaces the many drinks one or two days a month. We also start to experience aging of our family and family members. Um, and we continue to be in this phase of generativity versus stagnation that can often manifest, it, manifest itself as a midlife crisis. If we're going to excel in this decade, we need to recognize the strategic trade-offs in life, thinking of the things that we're doing both intentionally and incidentally, and work to craft an approach that we are in line with. We need to continue to demonstrate some sensational consistency and sustainability in how we are approaching our health, and especially in that recovery piece. Um, and we need to acknowledge we do not need to achieve everything all in a single year. We need to refine habits to have those of slight, small improvements year after year. As we enter our 50s, we're now near or past um, the peak in our career from a growth perspective in many ways. Um, the nest can begin to empty out for those that have kids. And we begin an internal countdown at many times until this time of retirement and the thinking around the desired level of financial independence. Um, we see a reemergence of the flexibility in our life routine and increased ability for self-focus. From the health perspective in this time, though, we now start to see some of the emergence of limiting disease, lung disease, liver disease, heart disease. All of these start to surge in their appearances and beginning to take very real and meaningful um, effects in our lives. Now, beyond thinking about avoiding certain activities or limiting how often to go play pickup basketball uh, or some tennis, we start to see the inability to perform these routines because now it is not a relative lack of ability or mobility. Now it starts to become an absolute limitation to perform some of the core functions required for some of these more athletic um, events. Additionally, we start to see cardiovascular disease that's been quietly brewing in the background for many decades limit some of our high performance abilities. In this, psychologically, we move along to this a phase of an ego integrity versus despair. Uh, that can at times be manifested uh, in the statistic of the triple divorce rate since 1990 as we appraise our lives of saying, am I becoming the person and have I become the person I wish to be? Or am I a little bit frustrated with what that has been? In our 50s, we want to excel by continually getting dialed in further and further mentally and physically, becoming firmly confident in who we are, and also acknowledging that even though we are in the midst of this process, we're also far enough along to continue to help others that are earlier along in these phases or in a similar phase as us, linking arms and progressing through life together. In this phase, we also want to maintain the abilities that age seeks to take away, continuing to sustain our lean muscle mass, uh, our power and our speed, along with many other physical components that prone towards decreasing in each decade of life. As we enter our 60s, Many start to think of retirement approaching. We begin to think about impact and legacy. And we truly do experience a freedom of time that's been unparalleled in previous phases due to commitments in either work and or family. Uh, we have the opportunity uh, to have growth and deep devotion to our hobbies. In this phase of life on the health side of things, we can see a surge in more health issues. Um, and this lack of muscle mass and muscle strength starts to become an issue limiting our ability to function um, and even some of the more general non-athletic ways. We start to see life-limiting cardiovascular disease emerge and even some of the smallest signs of worsening memory and dementia. In this psychological phase, um, also of ego integrity versus despair, we begin to have reminiscence about life and about career uh, with the result being either wisdom or despair. To excel in this decade, we really want to focus highly um, on a uniquely tailored approach towards how we are going to sustain our levels of fitness, 
balance, mobility, flexibility, cognition, and so many other ways and components of our health. We wanna be vigilant in taking prompt action, not letting small issues snowball into being much larger ones. And we wanna to continue to dig deep and try to search for that deep fulfillment in life that's external to the work that we may have been doing for the previous decades. As we enter and progress along into our 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100s, we experience continued retirement, express nostalgia, savoring and reflecting on life. We oftentimes see our peer group shrinking and our routines are heavily solidified. It's in these phases that we can at many times begin to see some problems emerge in our baseline abilities of hearing, of balance, um, and dramatic drop-offs in our strength and endurance. Also, our body's level of resilience is often a bit less than in previous decades, such that rapid deteriorations can take place in our health after acute events. And it is this poor functional status that can really accelerate this decline. Um, in this phase, as we're stuck in a certain routine in many regards, as we continue along in the psychological phase of ego integrity versus despair, we really want to work hard to avoid getting stuck into that grumpy old man mindset. Um, to excel in this decade, we really want to sustain consistency um, and really work to avoid accidental injury through continued focus on balance and agility, which is really a process that we should have been focusing on prior to these decades, but continuing even um, for a short while will help these skills to improve if we had not focused on them in the past. We also want to continue to keep sufficient variety in our life to keep ourselves from getting overly set in a certain pattern. And we want to live vibrantly and experience the world as desired. So after we've gone through the easy part, touching on a few highlights of concepts to pursue in each of the decades of life, we'll now pursue uh, a little bit deeper approach, talking about how we create and correct some of the patterns uh, that we might not have performed as well in these earlier decades. Um, first, we want to call out that each health challenge encountered by decade can be hedged against, and this is one of compounding growth. Knowing the plan is hard, following that plan is even harder. This presentation is really focusing on some strategy and tactics, but in real life, we also need to be aware of the opportunities in place and have the vision to action upon those opportunities. So as we think about health in this perspective of compounding growth, Full quote from Charlie Munger, understanding both the power of compounding interest and the difficulty in getting it is the heart and soul of understanding a lot of things. So the core here is reminding ourselves that no matter where we are in life, no matter what decade we may be in or how our health is performing, as soon as we get started, we can then begin to experience the potential for this compound growth in our health. So as we begin to approach and correct upon failure, to enable this compounding growth to begin, we start out thinking about our tactics. How do we do something? To create success here, we really need to pay attention to the process we're following, measure our outcomes, and review and adjust our tactics as necessary to better achieve those outcomes. Going a layer deeper into the strategy level, we need to know what we're doing. In order to do this, we need to be able to be nimble. We need to be able to launch things quickly, keep it simple, and revise our plans if our strategies are not being effective or delivering the results that we wish to achieve. Progressing one layer deeper to the level of vision, we need to know why we are doing something and that why has to be fulfilling, it has to be meaningful for us. Uh, to create improvement here, we wanna take stock of our mission, determine our non-negotiables and understand our approach to navigating criticism, risk and failure even more foundational uh, than our approaches to tactics, strategy, and vision is to have a broad awareness of opportunity. In order to be aware of the opportunities that exist, we need to survey the landscape of experts, learn of opportunities across the landscape, and seek to partner with the best experts available to pursue the best opportunities known. So as we've taken this journey through the decades of life and our approach towards building health. Uh, I hope that this has been a meaningful presentation for you all. Uh, it's been my joy to be able to talk through some of these highlights. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me at my email here, brian.hollett at shiftlife.com. And as always, 
our whole team at Shift would love to talk to you if any other concerns, questions, or comments should arise that we can assist with. Thanks so much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Aaron.